Regensburg. 10 Tips for Travel Enthusiasts. Highlight Regensburg. Such a well-preserved historic cityscape simply had to be crowned a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. The Stone Bridge, St. Peter's Cathedral, the Old City Hall and the Palace of Thurn and Taxis are just the tip of the iceberg of well over a thousand listed buildings. The medieval city ensemble of the Danube City is therefore far from being a museum. Chic stores, art galleries, pubs and cafes invite you to stroll, look and enjoy within historic walls. Regensburg, the medieval metropolis on the Danube. Germany's only preserved medieval metropolis, 2,000 years of history in Fast Forward, Regensburg adorns itself with many superlatives, and yet the expectations thus aroused are exceeded when one sees this unique ensemble of buildings for oneself and feels the special atmosphere. Around 20,000 students and thus almost one-seventh of the population give the venerable old lady a very youthful and fresh face. Since the fall of the Iron Curtain, the Upper Palatinate metropolis has also become an important economic hub for traffic with Eastern Europe, its Danube port an important goods transshipment point. Recent years have brought the city additional notoriety, Joseph Ratzinger's election as Pope Benedict XVI in 2005 made it a papal city and place of pilgrimage overnight, although Ratzinger was not born there, but spent long years of his life and career in the church hierarchy here. With the UNESCO accolade in 2007, it also became a World Heritage Site, joining the exclusive club of sites that humanity is concerned about preserving. However, this title is also a burden, on the one hand, because certain modernization and construction projects can now only be implemented under observation, think of the stone bridge, which is in urgent need of renovation and would require a modern bridge to relieve the burden, on the other hand, because since then a veritable flood of tourists has poured over the city, which the previous infrastructure with hotels and restaurants can hardly cope with. Anyone who wants to visit the city in peace and quiet should therefore make an effort to reserve a room in good time. Through the old town. Regensburg's historic city center is relatively compact, surrounded by a belt of parks to the west, south and east and bordered by the Danube to the north. Opposite the old town, between the Danube and the Regen, is Stadtamhof, which has since been incorporated and was an independent settlement until 1924. Most of the sites are located close to each other in the heart of the old town and are within easy walking distance. There are two exceptions, the Scots Monastery St. Jacob is hidden somewhat off to the west. Either you head for it as a side trip of the tour after the Snuff Museum or you visit it independently of the sightseeing tour, it's worth it in any case. On the southern edge of the old town, the princely Palace of Thurn and Taxis forms an independent ensemble with the Palace Museum and the Basilica of St. Emmeram, for which a visit of at least two hours should be planned. Porta Pretoria and Bishop's Court. The walk through Regensburg's history begins, of course, with the Romans. In 179 AD, Marcus Aurelius had a fort built opposite the confluence of the Regan and the Danube. A piece of the wall in the southeast corner and the north gate Porta Pretoria on the street Unter den Schwibigen have been preserved. Assembled without the help of mortar from 13 wedge-shaped pieces of stone, it reaches an arch width of 4 meters. The Regensburg bishops integrated the Roman gate in the Middle Ages as a representative entrance to their residence, the four-winged complex of the bishop's court between the Schwibigen and St. Peter's Cathedral serves, among other things, as a hotel and restaurant and as the Cathedral Treasure Museum. Cathedral of St. Peter. The beginnings of this church are lost in the 8th century, when St. Boniface declared the city a bishop's seat along with Passau and Salzburg. There is evidence of a cathedral of the Carolingian period from the 11th century, its foundations are joined today's cathedral in the east and are partly built over by it. City fires then led to ever new conversions and extensions until the cathedral building project was completely restarted under Bishop Leo the Thundorfer. The construction work had to be interrupted several times due to financing problems, it was not until 1785 that the imposing cathedral was completed, then in the late Baroque taste of the time. In the 19th century it was regatized and the two towers were raised to their present height. Relaxed view of the cathedral. You can enjoy an intense view of the west facade of the cathedral while having a coffee from House Who Port across the street, choose one of the tables of the restaurant rooms at the windows of the second floor. The tracery and sculptures appear within reach and you have leisure to study every detail. By the way, the house itself is also an attraction, parts of the four-winged complex date back to the 12th century, and in the courtyard the gothic flight of steps leading up to the former banquet hall has been preserved. 
An interesting detail is the gothic figurine group mounted halfway up, the foolish virgin, is about to succumb to the blandishments of the dapper prince of the world. Jubilant voices in the cathedral. Even those who are not churchgoers will enjoy a mass in the cathedral with the musical accompaniment of the Regensburger Domspatzen. The boys choir participates in the liturgy almost every Sunday morning, the powerful impression of the church interior is intensified by the jubilant voices of the singers. If you prefer to attend only one concert of the Domspatzen, you can find out about the dates on their homepage. Favorite place, Symbolic Stone. Every time I come to this city, my first walk leads me here, in front of the breathtakingly bizarre, endlessly detailed St. James portal of the Scots Church. It is a panopticon of the Middle Ages, its plagues and fears, its pleasures and joys. There is the caress couple in the eastern picture field. Demons and mythical creatures, saints and monks, harlots and fiddlers populate the north wall with the ornamental portal in sometimes bizarre looking entanglements. Take your time for the many images and scenes. The overall representation is probably that of the last judgment, to let it work on you. Perhaps you will succeed in what art history has failed to do so far, a conclusive interpretation of this partly crude symbolism. St. Emmeram, Castle Thurn and Taxis. Thurn und Taxis Castle on the southern edge of Regensburg's old town is a city in itself. The complex, originally a monastery, developed around a probably pre-Carolingian church with the tomb of St. Emmeram. In the 10th century Abbot Ramwald arranged for the expansion of the monastery, in the 11th century the western part and the Wolfgang crypt were built, in the 12th century the church of St. Rupertus was built next to St. Emmeram, the two churches connected by a common porch. Fires, rebuilding, destruction during the Thirty Years' War and finally in 1730 the complete Baroque remodeling by the Assam brothers repeatedly changed the face of the church and the monastery. In 1748, Prince Alexander Ferdinand von Thurn und Taxis moved into the East Wing with his family as principal commissioner, i.e. as the emperor's representative at the perpetual parliament. Neufahrplatz. The Gesentenstrasse leads into the Neufahrplatz. It was built from 1521 for the pilgrimage to the beautiful Mary, an image of grace painted by Albrecht Altdorfer, but already in 1542 with Regensburg's conversion to Protestantism it was converted into a Protestant church and appears in the restrained garb of the early Renaissance. Until 1519, this square had been the center of the Jewish quarter, the synagogue had been burned down in the programs, and because a miracle was reported here, the city quickly erected a wooden pilgrimage chapel, which was then replaced by the Neufahr church. The outlines of the destroyed synagogue have been in the form of an accessible floor relief in front of the church since 2005. With his memorial to the synagogue, called Misraish, Hebrew, East, the Israeli artist Danny Caravan explicitly wanted to create a place of encounter. Regensburgers have embraced this and used the implied foundation and column stumps to rest and chat. The third landmark on Neufahrplatz is hidden to the east of the church. Old Chapel. Dreihelmgas and Am Frauenbergel lead into the old corn market with the collegiate church. Our Lady to the Old Chapel on the south side. The foundations of the church were laid in the 9th century, alterations were made in the late Gothic period, and the completely new interior decoration in the spirit of the Rococo period took place in the 18th century. The Gothic figures in the main portal, which was installed in 1752, have a unique appearance. They, as well as the scenes of the baptism of the pagan Agilafinger Duke Theodo in the frescoes, are probably intended to emphasize that the old chapel was Regensburg's first place of worship. A masterpiece of the Rococo period is the High Altar by Simon Sorg of Regensburg. Romanism and Ducal Court. The baptism of the Agilo fingers depicted in the old chapel is said to have taken place in the 7th century, the dukes set up their residence in the former Roman fort on the west side of the corn market. Afterwards, the Carolingians built their palace from 826 onwards, from which Charlemagne regularly courted and ruled. From 1195, the palace complex then fell to the Wittelsbach dynasty. Today, the ducal court appears in the garb of the 12th century and is connected to the 28-meter high Roman tower by a swinging arch. The tower is made of granite blocks from a Roman predecessor and was a refuge and treasury.